alignment principles. The two basic alignment principles are edge alignment and center alignment. Each is essentially a different way of utilizing an invisible line. Edge alignment Any object with flat edges can be used for edge alignment. Rectangles are especially well suited for this since they have four flat edges to align. Their right angles also give a sense of order to a composition using them. Similarity It is possible to align one or more edges of a rectangle. When more edges are aligned, the rectangle seems to be in a stronger gestalt with the surrounding shapes. Also note how the distance between shapes is a factor in how strong the gestalt seems. The repetition of right angles adds a similarity shape to the composition which increases the sense of unity. It is possible to set up other angles of alignment with shapes other than rectangles. The critical factor is that the objects do align along their edges in a way that is clear. Objects that are on opposite sides of a composition may align but it is unlikely that the alignment will be noticed. An obvious kind of edge alignment takes place around the outside of a group of shapes when they align to provide a simple overall shape format, especially when that shape is a rectangle. Center Alignment any shaped items can be organized using center alignment. Simple shapes work best because it is easier to adjust their centers so the alignment is easier to notice. Center alignment will work to some extent on any axis but it works based with a vertical axis. This is because the vertical axis relates based to our sense of balance and symmetry. Objects that are not rectangles should be center aligned on a vertical axis or enclosed in a rectangular background and edge aligned. With diagonals, you just take your chances. Looking through any magazines for materials to use that almost every item on every page is organized using either edge or vertical center alignment. There are four common types of alignment when dealing with text placement. Center Flush left Flush right Justified.
centered. A trap that designers sometimes fall into is placing every element on the center axis of the page. While this is a more organized and symmetrical look than placing text haphazardly, it tends to be a pretty weak and easy choice. When your entire page is symmetrical, it often ends up looking boring with no visual interest. Center alignment works best when dealing with just a few short lines of text. Never use it for full paragraphs because it makes them more difficult to read. The audience has no straight margin so their eyes must move to a new position every time they start a new line. Add interest to an all-centered graphic design by playing with text shapes, fonts, and colors. Check out the example to the right. The design is centered, but uses different orientations and letter sizes to create the shape of a sword. Just because text is center aligned doesn't mean there is no room for creativity. As a general rule, use center alignment. Make sure it's clear that using it internationally, not just because you are lazy. Flash left. Text aligned against a hard left hand margin is generally considered the strongest, safest choice and is the most common orientation. It results in a very comfortable, secure and conservative look, though again, there are plenty of ways to use it creatively. Flush left alignment is a great choice whenever large paragraphs of text. The hard edge on the left naturally complements the way we read English. Paragraphs are flush left remember to keep headlines flush left as well. Flush right Flush right alignment is much less common than other types. So it's often used to give elements a unique or offbeat look and feel. With this orientation, text is aligned against a hard right hand margin with the left side left rag. Like with center alignment, avoid using flush right on large paragraphs since the ragged left edge will make them difficult to read. With shorter lines of text, it can help give words extra weight and importance since it requires more effort to read. It's more interesting than centering everything, but overusing it may frustrate reader. Flush right alignment is also used in place of flush left in terms of readability when dealing with languages that read right to left, such as Chinese, Japanese, or Arabic. Justified With justified alignment, 
both the left and right sides of the text are effectively flush against hard straight margins. This is achieved by individually adjusting the spacing of each line of text so a line with fewer characters will be more broadly spaced. While a line with more characters will have less space between them, Ideally, the difference in space will be suitable enough that you won't really notice the difference. But the end result will be a neat and organized look that's more formal looking than flush left alignment. Probably seen this technique used in books newspapers, magazines, and other publications. Justification is especially useful when working with multiple columns of text because it helps to keep them visually separate from one another as well as fit more characters into a smaller amount of space. Justified text comes with one major complication. If individual words are too long or the columns are too narrow, it can sometimes create large unsightly gap of blank space. If you are having these types of issues with justification, try using a longer line length, a smaller font or shorter words.